Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video as well as the music too. I want to give a massive shout out to literally everyone that is in the Destiny community. All of you. Actually, all of you. Without your help revealing codes, none of this would be possible. So if I show clips of people or spreadsheets, say names, just know you're still a part of it all. I just can't add all of the names. Thank you. Never did I think Bungie would have hit us with a puzzle this elaborate and collaborative in the same season that we had an exotic quest that took us 15 minutes to complete. Orders of Time has not only been one of my favorite events of all time, but serves as a beautiful spiritual successor to Niobe Labs and Outbreak Prime. We have a big story to tell including secret missions, Lord of Reality, Magic Hexagons, ARG sequences, community collaboration, spreadsheet stories, and to top it all off, a jarring climax. Bust out your thinking tinfoil hat and come through a journey of time with me as we talk about the forest that is truly infinite, Niobe Labs 2, Vex Boogaloo. We already have videos on the channel dedicated to these stories, but it's important that I talk about them again. Bungie is no stranger to excellent puzzles and communities coming together. I mean, hell, Luke Smith and his team on World of Warcraft were the first to complete the Scepter in the Shifting Sands, and he still has the title of Scarab Lord on World of Warcraft now. I've never played World of Warcraft, but reading up on these steps involved for that sounds reflective of what is done in the philosophy of these community events in Destiny. Outbreak Prime, for example, had players looking through an Owl Sector rabbit hole, then getting a sequence of codes for the ARG map of the room, to get a final piece to start the quest of the weapon. Niobe Labs had players using ideals from the lore of the forges and mapping together their clues for Niobe to help them solve a very difficult enemy-filled, race-against-the-clock challenge. Even more recent than those two events, Bungie gave everyone who owned the Collector's Edition of Shadowkeep a rune to solve the puzzle, and when opened, it had little unreadable codes for each person, with hundreds of different codes to read. This turned into the community forming chapters of lore from it. All of these will strike in similarity with this new secret event in Destiny. But I want to make the message clear. These are all very well done events, and this one may take the prize as the best puzzle we have ever seen Bungie do, but also the most perplexing finale. So, on to the story of the community that cracked the code. January 14th, 2020. Bungie Help released a statement that server maintenance will be delayed and that new hotfix will not be put into the game. This threw me for a loop when I woke up to everyone tweeting that Osiris had a non-advertised mission and that it was just to explore the corridors of time. Myself and many others immediately jumped on to see what the heck this could all be about. But we also knew this wasn't the first time Bungie has dropped something like this on us. The thing that was off for me at first was why did Osiris have the secret mission? These missions are usually hidden in other places around the world, or in the case of Niobe Labs, in a sequence of symbols to even start. But what we would all come to find out later is that that was the point. Osiris gave us the quest, and it wasn't a hassle to start because we would be here looking for answers for days. Or if you waited, weeks. But more on that later. You were thrown into the corridors of time with no real objective, just to explore this truly infinite forest with an array of symbols, and I want you to pay attention to these callouts because they will come into play a lot in the time spent doing this puzzle. Traveler, Clover, Diamond, Hex, Snake, Plus, and for later on, a blank space. All of these outside of Traveler and Blank are going to be potential doorways every single time you need them for a sequence of doors. Think about it like this. You have five potential paths each time you enter a room in a seven sequence code to reach what we will call a checkpoint. To even guess one right room in the sequence is one and five. Now do that seven times of guessing the correct path. You are left with the chance of guessing one path at one in 78,125. Now keep in mind there are 18 7 sequence paths to find, one 11 sequence path, and then the final path which we will get to later in the video, and you have a hell of a guessing game at hand. 
or you have clues hourly. You know that grandfather clock at your parents' house that's so loud and you just ask yourself why even have it if it makes this loud ring and ow, my ears, why are they so loud? Anyways, these clocks reveal that the top of the hour is significant in some way and this is also the case for the obelisk inside of Destiny 2. The Season of Dawn introduced these obelisks for guardians to connect planet to moon to shore and even the tower for some purpose that we will probably be shown at the end of the season. But these obelisks had an odd thing about them. Symbols. Symbols much like the ones we already described around the outside. What we didn't know until this event was well underway was that the obelisks were the key to the sequence. At the top of every hour, the obelisks would spit out a bunch of symbols in a different order for players to relay to the teammates inside the corridors of time. The way to read this was always the same on the obelisk, with one starting top right, then moving clockwise till the seventh symbol was in the middle. Once you ran through these seven sequences, you made it to a room called the Time Loss Vault. Oh, we're just back here. Um... Looked below you. Yeah. Okay. So, people gotta start taking screenshots. I'm assuming people have already. So, oh my god. Is this gonna have to do something with like fucking hex code, dude? Cause I am not good with hex code. <laughs> oh, what the frick? What is that? Is that step one? What was this? The Time Loss Vault had two major keys in it, a piece of lore to collect and a puzzle piece in the center. This piece would be a small piece of the map to the end goal. Here's the catch though. Every hour, we knew a new route to that goal. This started out with many hardcore players asking themselves, why would Bungie give us the answer every hour? I want to solve it myself, not have it hand fed. Well, this quickly became, holy crap, the answer is taking too long to get here. Someone please make it 30 minutes. I want to see my hexagons. Players were so perplexed by these six sided panels around the middle hexagon and the lights in the center of the hexagon. I want to break this down so nobody feels confused in the future, but I kind of doubt that this will make full sense still. These rooms were actually puzzle pieces. You hit the question mark, question mark, question mark, and three things happened. Number one, you received lore. Number two, you saw a grave with a sword, a ghost, and a guardian crest at the foot. Was this a teaser for the reward? And number three, you looked down and saw the symbol in the middle with surrounding doors and symbols. This hexagon was made up of parts to connect onto a map. The middle symbol meant that you were going through that symbol's door. But the lights, or lack thereof, were created in a way that you needed to reorder your symbol path to fit them. But the clue was the outside hexagons, which needed something to mirror to be able to connect. So for example, if I had Traveler Traveler, Hex Hex Snake, Traveler Traveler on one side, that meant I had to mirror those little symbols to another one for it to fit. See, I, I, I told you it wouldn't really make sense. This went on for a long time and players truly were trying to brute force this early to find the end. But players were going to be in for one. People are just, they're out here saying some dumb sh dude. I'm, we're, I'm trying to make progress. This eliminates probabilities. So that means we only have a better chance going forward. Like, you don't need to come in here. Oh, I told you. Oh, I knew you were going to fail. I knew you weren't going to get it. Oh, I knew it. Bro. That is not helping. We knew about two symbols thanks to a bungee press kit that had been leaked earlier, thank you Lono, and other than that, we didn't know the rest. Players tried to use other symbols as clues to put together to the next route, but there just wasn't a route to be had. The obelisks were the only way. So once all except for three remaining were found, the community came together in bulk. This is where the community clustered together. 
with over 1,000 possibilities left and only three codes out, this was madness as far as which route to take. But who cares about chances when thousands of people in the Destiny community were able to find our huge path we had been waiting all day for and over 1,000 possibilities remaining in only, you know, uh, 20 minutes. Yeah, the community found the path in 20 minutes. It was time to beat the secret mission, grab the sword off the grave, and slay out. This was about to be a pretty cool one day event and uh, oh, an emblem too. Yeah, no worries. I'll just be taking my so Why did I get teleported back here? Oh no. It's not over! I hear music. Yeah, don't, don't say anything yet. It is confirmed that it does lead you somewhere, yes. Okay, that's all we needed. Thank you very much, kind people. All right, here we go. Deal. Oh. That was plus next impact. I really okay. hope I screen have it. Screenshot. Screenshot. Oh wait, wait. Is it is it another code or no? Wait, is it done? wait, wait, wait. What the? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything. Hold on. No, no, but we need to know if it's another code. Like. Yo, this wait. Is oh, wait. yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to screenshot this right now. Reveal. Savior of the past. Is that it? Oh boy. How innocent we were on day one. You received lore, an emblem, and a new code when you made it to the seemingly final room. But no mission complete. And hey, my friend revealed a different code than me. Why can I keep revealing codes? Players originally had speculated a couple of ideas. Number one, we were going to have to wait for all the other hint rooms and do those. That was quickly debunked. And number two, theories of taking just your fire team and redoing the other sequences but with your new codes were had, but the main problem with this was that the middle symbol most of the time was actually a blank. This wasn't a glitch, this was for real. We were about to be in this room for the next six days. From being a part of the main team of streamers, data wizards, map artists, and transcribers, some of these stories I will share will be the first time anyone is ever hearing these publicly. So get ready, because just like the puzzle itself, the video really begins here. Night one was a shock to all of us. Not only were we just beginning this puzzle, but when the realization of how long this was going to take hit us, we were baffled. It's like some kind of. Yeah. So much raw data, wouldn't it be like pretty easy to find? Like match. No, because you we would think. Sequences. You dude, would remember. think that. <laughs> you would remember. Think that. And yet. <laughs> and yet. It'd be only like 19 different new symbols, not like no. a No, 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 we think this one is much, much bigger than the Dude, original. Dude, like, 100 like people in Raid Secrets couldn't have one match on the appropriate hour. I found one match in two hours. Yeah, it's it's massive. This database is going to be, uh, we're, yeah, we're in for one. <laughs> yes, you heard that clip correctly. One match in two hours on Raid Secrets Discord. That was surprising given that we were about to need 5,040 total unique pieces and we would need to match almost all of them to find a path to the solution. Originally on night one, we were throwing all of our community photos into a Google Drive that was shared, thinking that, well, there can't be that many and this would organize them. But we were thinking on a smaller scale since the final one to get here was only 18 pieces. So it wasn't unrealistic that we were going to be looking at the max 1000 range given how Outbreak Prime's ARG was around 1000 pieces as well. We were originally counting the number of sides that had blanks to throw the picks in at first, but this quickly sparked confusion as the community was mistaking the reveal room unique codes for the rooms before it. Also, this was just not an efficient way to sort through data. Day 
slash night number two kicks off and wow do we have a different system entirely we have now ascended into spreadsheets and mapping out data entry points tj09 built a code that would map our data for us and without this we wouldn't be where we are so a huge shout out to tj this was about to be huge this was our old map Okay, ponder that for a second, and uh, and boom, that's our new map. My job at first is what I will refer to as toothpaste capping. It felt like the factory job since I was rotating players into my game to screenshot their unique code. I wanna add something I didn't say earlier as well. The unique code changed every hour for a max of two hours per character for a total amount of codes per your account being six. So every hour you got a new code for a max of two per character. People were rotating into the game in masses. I don't even think I ever had a point where someone wasn't in my game. The reason why I especially was taking screenshots and putting them into a spreadsheet for the rest to transcribe was because other than the organization, it was also meant for us to take a nice clear image of the floor. Just look at some of the bad screenshots we received. I wish so badly in the next puzzle, the room is dark for my eyes sake and that there's a spot where players can take their screenshots very clearly. For all the screenshots that myself and many others in the community were taking and adding, it just wasn't enough. Just like the sleep we were about to be having this week. Transcribers and data entry team was going to have another problem of their own. This is the day that we decided to bring in another coding expert outside of our own. We met another person that without their program for our spreadsheet, none of this would be done yet. Zycor built a code that would auto sort our transcribed data. If the entire, like the entire piece, like all six links and the symbol and the openings match. So think about it like this. If you're entering a ton of unique pieces, it's hard to keep track of everything, right? How do you make sure that what you're entering in isn't a duplicate? So think about it like this. If you are entering a ton of unique pieces, it's hard to keep track of everything, right? How do you make sure that what you're entering isn't a duplicate? Use this system that he built. With this, anything that showed up in column M was detecting if the piece was a dupe or not. So any false or unique would automatically show up as so, and if it was true, you knew to stop there. We went from 300 transcribed data points to 1,129 in a day. Here's another major problem that we discovered though, by having this. We had made a ton of transcribing errors, and this was not going to be a fast process to fix. Oh, for f sake. <laughs> Dude. Now my shit isn't. Is it? Revoke their access. Clyde, are you anonymous, pumpkin? What kind of name? What you just say to me? When I say that by this point we had 9,000 data entries, that sounds good but I'd say a good 7,800 were going to need to be scrapped. But lots of people in the community just kept going while some spent over 24 hours fixing these data entry points. This was causing madness to occur. Coming in for the first time today on the Corridors of Time puzzle is Enigma rocking a hunter cloak and a nice gun there running all the way down straight line and it not anything gonna get in his way to contribute to this massive Her Herculean effort to solve this puzzle he's in and he's out smacked and gone Kohler's turn now coming in with his Titan not waiting his turn though just jumping right up on the edge of the line he wouldn't do well at a water park probably would trip on his friends gonna get him in and out just like the rest thanks so much for your contribution Kohler come back again on the next hour we'll get you in here for the gigantic corridors of time puzzle brought to you in part by Bungie and the tenacious destiny community we out here it fingers f***ing hamster
starting to look very very clear these are the days where the whole community was coming together and working harder than ever to the point where you literally had people sleeping on stream We were going to need help. I don't mean in the sense of sharing data. No, I mean in the sense of teams to transcribe, screenshot, dump data, and map. This was already happening on day number three, but day four and five, I'm not even joking when I say we were receiving resumes from people and that we legitimately had a hiring process for people to be taking on these jobs. It was officially like working a nine to five, except much longer hours, much like a nine to five. We had people who were showing us their stuff that we had to even fire some for jobs. We had people who couldn't commit to long term. And then we had the Rat Pack who were like coked out monsters in a Wolf of Wall Street like office. Seriously, when I say that 500 data entry points needed to be transcribed and the Rat Pack was done in 30 minutes, I mean it. it <laughs> you're like you're a legend. Yeah, it, you're sounds a trooper, like, uh, it sounds like uh, Bad Luck Brian on steroids. Yeah. Also, Sounds the, like yeah, you I, need a rat in your life. Zycor, the data set you just gave me, half of them have zeros in the opening. We also had a ton of help from other communities, such as chat rooms, discords, Reddit communities, and other websites along the way. This was truly a community project from the ground up, and a big thank you to everyone out there who helped. But we are not done. By the end of day number five, it was apparent we were going to need certain puzzle pieces to begin mapping out our route. Anyone who wanted to try and brute force was going to be running into some problems with their official amount of unique codes being 5,040, which is 7 factorial. Bungie really loves their 7s. And the possible route ranging from 30 to 50 potential doors to be open. You were looking at odds in the 20 to 70 million chance range since you didn't know all the symbols and you didn't know if a puzzle piece door was going to be blocked on the map. The map had also hit the point where we knew it was going to be a full-on maze for us to draw through. Just like the 18-piece one before it. Another thing that I noticed to be very cool during my time taking screenshots was that the emblem you got for hitting the reveal also had a purpose. Sure, the emblem was a reward for hitting the reveal room, but it was also an incentive for players to show their code. Think about it like this. If you were to give thousands of people the option to come in and help a puzzle they wouldn't get a reward for until it was solved, sure, some would help, but not everyone. This emblem ensured that people were revealing their codes and we found that by day number four, Bungie was rotating a new code for everyone every hour, each character instead of a max of six. You now had a max of 72 per day. We went from 2680 to 3460 contiguous puzzle pieces in four hours as compared to about 100 in the five hours before it. We were getting very close, but a few obstacles still stood in our way. I am all for gatekeep- wait. I am all for collaborating gatekeep- wait. wait. I am all for collaboration and helping one another and oppose gatekeeping information because it just feels wrong. During this process, there were so many accusations of us withholding information for other sites, discords, reddits, etc. that we literally had to make a reddit thread to answer everybody's questions. This was simply not true. All data was made available as soon as we possibly could have made it. 
The other problem with letting everyone see the sheet we were working away at every second was that Google Sheets couldn't keep up and was slow from the traffic. So slow and so much data on these that Google shut us down actually. They shut us down and thought we were trying to flood their servers or in other terms DDoS them. This was such a hard topic to talk about because I feel what I'm about to say will upset some greatly, but that is not my intent. We tried so many different spreadsheets, data collection, other websites, and slowed down a lot to try to work with everyone because let's be real, this wouldn't even be possible without everyone. The problem here is that we may have worked with almost too many different sites and data entries. Look, there's nothing wrong with this, and I love that so many wanted to collaborate data, but I also felt that this may have slowed us down in doing so. The main reason is that we already had a process that was working, and then it was like shifting new corridor management every day. Some methods were great, but data wasn't transcribed well. Others had great data, but the sites had trouble working. This is a tough balancing act because everyone should be included, but we also had a system that we were just banging out data and getting it done. This also created a negative headspace in the process because nobody was sleeping and there was a clash on what we should be doing constantly, but this turned into a group eventually. I think this will serve as a learning curve for everyone involved in future puzzles going forward. This was the final day. The day that we were going to beat this damn puzzle. The day that the map was going to be given a path and the day that we could all reflect on the crazy week it had been. As we neared the final hours, we shifted from data collection to mostly just bounty hunting puzzle pieces. It was insane because due to the viewership through streams and social media, we were able to track all of our bounties in very short time. The final stretch to the madness being over was happening. Zykor pulled a play that only few knew about. He decided to put in a fake symbol at the end, a diamond. This could have easily thrown us into a different room or the correct path. In the final moments, the data team, streamers, map editors, and transcribers were pulled into one voice channel to go over the code. And the rest was history. Five, four, three, two, one, posting, posting, posting. The sequence is, ready to write it down, Ready. clover, diamond, snake, clover, plus, plus, hex, 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 plus, diamond, plus, snake, diamond, clover, snake, plus, plus, snake, snake, hex, diamond, clover, plus, diamond, hex, hex, Plus... And diamond. Here we go, chat. Moment of truth. Where are we gonna get a marker? <gasps> Objective complete, boys. Objective complete. Let's go. We're 100% right. sure we followed what he, what he said, right? Yep, yes. this is it. Alright, deafen, 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 deafen. Holy shit. Holy shit, what the fuck? Holy shit. I love these guys. I love all of you in chat, man. I fucking love all of you in chat, dude. We fucking did it, man. Favorite weapons! One of her favorite weapons. <laughs> it's a sword. I've marked this grave with one of his favorite weapons. It's a weapon. It's a sword. It has to be a sword. You've explored the corridors of time and discovered a timeline where your journey ends. Chronometric weapon core and exploring the quarters of time quest step two. Go back to Saint. Go back to Saint. Wait, what the f What was that core that we got? The end? What? 
What? What? What is that? What is that? Oh, what is the? What the? What the? Yes, that was me legitimately crying. With over 100 hours put in by almost everyone from this community and all the others listed in the graphic, this moment was special and culminated everything we love about this community. Now, was it time to claim our sword? The final voice line showed us that the grave in the corridors was not Saints, but our grave. The grave of the Guardian that avenged Cade 6, and the grave that had a significant story, clearly. Does this mean we changed our path in time? Does this mean someone saved us? I'll let you wait for the My Name is Bife video that explains all of that, but for now, we knew one thing. The quest gave us a weapon core. That core was to be returned to Saint-14, and the quest led us to change our fate and kill a boss in the Hollowed Lair Strike. However, this gave us what many had feared or thought it could. Why fight? I will walk the streets again tomorrow. Maybe I will sing. Charge the fire three spreads of kinetic slugs. I'm done. This was not a sword at all. Actually, this was a weapon that was already planned on the roadmap a week from now. This was the Bastion. A fusion rifle kinetic shotgun hybrid, a weapon that shot hexagon forms, and a weapon that players would be at Bungie's throat about. I want to say a couple of things before I ask your opinion, so hold on to it for just a second. The thing I can really appreciate is our roadmap isn't exactly as planned. We can jumpstart some pieces in it, making it more malleable. I mean, we literally jumped into the future to snag a weapon so everyone in the community could use it early. I also think the weapon is very unique and interesting. It adds a new presence to the fusion archetype and is a blast to shoot. The problems that I and most of the community can probably agree on are as follows. I think if this weapon wasn't on the roadmap or had been data mined, more people would love this weapon. But I also have a perspective of someone who chose to stay up all week to get it done. My choice, not Bungie's fault. I also felt that this puzzle, although not gatekept, should have been more inclusive for the whole community. Remember, my perspective is a bit jaded considering I was a part of the core of it. The other thing was that I felt we were teased with the sword, and trust me, if this isn't over and we do get the sword, expect a video on that. But the sword was on our grave and etched into it for a reason. Saint called it our favorite weapon, and yeah, it was. We killed Oryx in his original form to have the chance to unlock swords, so getting Bastion just felt odd because we've never used it before. Also, the dialogue at the end. Saint says this weapon will never be used against a Guardian again, but this thing slays in Crucible and is not very good inside of Strikes and Raids. No matter what, when you have a puzzle like this and players don't get exactly what they want, you can't please everyone with the reward. I just wish some things were changed. I appreciate the new approach to an exotic lock behind a puzzle as this ties story and gameplay in very well, and it leads me to believe Bungie is getting more creative than ever in their storytelling. I just still feel perplexed by this, and I'm scared that after Niobe Labs demotivating players to want to help with puzzles, and now with this reward to many feeling like it missed the mark, that player participation will go away for these slowly, and I don't want the puzzles to go away, because for me, I didn't care what the prize was. I just enjoyed the puzzle with the people I met. That sounds really corny in my head. Like I said before, making a dark mode in the reveal room and adding a spot for players to take screenshots would have helped a lot for data, but also maybe adding an in-game map to the area to update our progression. And please, don't put a sword in the grave. 
What did you think about the puzzle and reward? I think it's important to keep an open mind about this one. I think in general, Say No to Rage summed up the whole experience pretty well. Think about, that's the Destiny community. This event is a picture of the Destiny community. You have like a smaller group of really hardcore, insanely dedicated players, and then it, and then it fringes out from that. Lesser and lesser engagement, right? You have these circles that just span out all the way to the edges of like mom and dad who play a couple hours a night. And the beautiful piece about the way they built this is we needed all we need we all needed each other for this to happen. That hardcore dedicated group in the middle that was coming up with spreadsheets and algorithms and programs, right? We needed every edge. We needed the one hour a night players to send their pictures in. We needed the people that like played a little bit but could pay attention to Twitter and look for bounties. Like we need every it's a picture of the community. Because there's just layers of engagement and there's layers of hardcore casual in the community and we all needed each other. It never would have gotten done without it. This is the where are we now portion of the video. And to be honest, this one may turn into a part two if Bungie releases something else on the 28th of January because we just got bashing early, but who knows? Bungie received a lot of flack for the reward at the end, and I think your perspective on it comes from which type of player you were during all of this. If you were in the position of the hardcore bunch, you probably aren't too happy with the reward, but if you had been lightly following and then scooped your reward, you probably didn't have all that much care for it. Bungie also released a post that they will be closing the quarters of time starting the 28th as well. So the puzzle will never be able to be seen again, and I personally feel like it's erasing all of the work we put in as a community. But they're probably just prepping the area for the end of the season content, so I can't make a judgment yet. As of this current reset, players don't even need to run the 30 sequence code anymore. They can just pick up the quest from Saint-14 at any time, making the work put in by the community feel like it's also being lost in time. I think going forward, this needs to not be the case as it's things like this that really allow the player base to appreciate the work to get there. It just feels handholdy to me is all, especially given that the 28th, the quest would still be there with Saint 14 anyways. The moral of this story is not just expectations versus reality, but more so unity and even more community. We quite literally formed together as an entire community on this one and worked together to reach into the future and snag an exotic. How cool is that? The end of this is also bittersweet for me because I met a ton of amazing people from all over and I get to hopefully do justice in sharing those people's stories. Hopefully as many as I could. All I know is that I hope more puzzles come to us in the future and I hope we can all work together again. Through the ups and downs, the rewards, the feelings, one thing was made clear. This united us all. If you did enjoy this story, a like would be greatly appreciated, as well as a subscription. We're getting close to partner on Twitch, so if you want to catch me live, just click the link at the top of the description and follow me there. Anyways, next video will be a lot less time waiting, and I appreciate all the support. Looper time. Mm. How do you know which piece goes where? Huge question. I don't know yet. I mean, I sort of do, but I really don't. Um, see, I don't. I don't think Bungie would make this a 19-hour thing. That that's just me. I got a question. How did I get volunteered for that reference, Lono? Trying to say something? Because because you're actually on top of me in the sheet. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> God, I gotta get the laughs going, right? <laughs> a lot of them sacking himself in the corners on this one. What can I say? I like, I like a big, strong dude. I mean, what's the oh. <laughs> uh, it's... I'm gonna go back through and get everything. Oh my. <laughs> oh, thanks, Kagara. Oh, no.
damn. The fucking <laughs> music comes in. Oh, oh, <laughs> There's no stairs for me to climb under. Oh! It's, it's, it's literally just. Whoa, Whoa <laughs> what the? I made that joke dude. earlier. The uh, hell was that? You and me? Guys. Is the shirt you the shirt you wearing, is it felt? Why? Mine. Touch it, make sure. Ooh, it is yeah. mouth. Oh for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually getting better at these songs now. Dude, I've been practicing and it's going all right, you know? Yeah. I'm actually like learning how to play this thing properly. You trying to play a little sea shanty with me? Uh, I can try. I'm going to go really low, but I can, I can give it a shot. This thing's kind of getting low on batteries, so i you ready. All right, here we go. It's three symbols. It's three <laughs>